Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about the DB2, uh, DB2 uh, basics. So, and these are some of the topics which I would like to cover. Um, I would not be able to cover all the topics in a single day, so I'll be uh, going through each and every topic in a separate video. Okay. So the contents of this particular tutorial will be like the basics, and then learn the storage management, then the log file management, database backups recovery and performance tuning now uh, DB2 comes uh, in different bundles and different uh, you can say different versions or different editions okay so uh, basically I've listed out here the uh, the different products of DB2 so for example we have DB2 every place and this is uh, this will be used in mobile applications then we have the DB2 Express C edition which is uh, free of charge and uh, uh, what I would recommend is you to install this on your system and uh, you know you can work with this it's totally free and then you have the DB2 Express Edition, DB2 Workgroup Server Edition, DB2 Enterprise Server Edition now um, uh, most of the features will be very uh, will be common in uh, most of these DB2 editions but uh, there are certain cons constraints like um, the amount of memory you can use the amount of CPU you can use and the number of users which can connect to database and some of the features like storage optimization and partitioning features those things so those kind of limitations will be there uh, when you use uh, a lower version of DB2 compared to the higher version now we also have uh, certain things called DB2 advanced enterprise server edition which it's a new f uh, which is a new edition which is coming in version 10.1 10.5 10 okay and basically DB2 is supported in uh, all uh, platforms for example IBM AX, HP UX, Solaris, Linux, Windows you name it and you have it right so basically it is supported uh, in all uh, platforms so how do we um, check the current uh, level of DB2 Okay, for example, uh, we have different uh, DB2 versions like 8.1, 9.1, 10.1, 10.5. So, uh, to identify that, we have a command called DB2 level. Okay, so uh, from the output, how uh, we can identify what uh, version it is and where it is installed and all those kind of stuff. Now if you see, uh, it says 64 here. So, basically, it means it's uh, DB2 64 bit. Okay and uh, in the information token you can see that v9.7 so basically it means it's, it's a 9.7 uh, db2 version and the 2 over here it means the fixed pack okay so similarly uh, it's it, it's been highlighted here also it's fixed pack 2 but again th this uh, means the same thing it's the fixed pack 2 and then you have the build number okay now why the build number is important is um, for example you have a sap db2 now sap db2 and the pure db2 when when i say sap db2 uh, what sap does is they take the db2 and they mold the software according to their needs so the build number will vary okay for example you downloaded the db2 software from ibm side and you downloaded software from sap side okay the build number for both this uh, software will differ even though it might be the same version same fixed pack right the build will vary so that's why it's very important to know the build number and again you have um, the product installation so for example if when you install it the default will be in most of the Linux system will be the slash opt then IBM and uh, for so and just in case if you want to uh, like identify it quickly you can just uh, run this command and check it where your software is installed okay now um, it is possible that you might have installed uh, db2 on multiple locations on a same single system right now using this uh, particular command the like db2 ls mm, you can identify where and all you have installed your db2 so basically it tells you which version it's nine for example in this case it's 9.1 fixed pack 3 it's 9.7 then again 9.72 so different fixed packs and you get the installation date also okay now i told you like db2 comes in di different edition like enterprise server edition work group server edition and express edition all those kind of things right now you want to identify what db2 software 
or what edition has been installed uh, on this location then you can use the db2 ls and and just give the base location where your software is installed so it will give you the necessary information and there are certain hidden features which which is inclusive of um, your uh, base installation so in case you are interested to know what are what are the hidden features installed <coughs> along with your base installation uh, basically you can run this command q hyphen q hyphen a okay so basically it is um, this command is used to list your software location identify the edition installed okay now the architectural overview like how your application interact with the database engine and how it works okay so uh, this particular slide i can say mostly um, is the process overview not not the exact architectural overview but it's the process overview okay now if you see it says work process now this slide i made uh, for sap customer now it, your application be different thing like it can be a web sphere application or web logic application or java application whatever whatever it is okay so you have the application layer here and you have the database um, server here okay the square box uh, sorry it's a rectangle box so and then you have the physical disks okay so this green boxes uh, basically denotes like it's a physical disk now <coughs> so let's imagine you have the application process here then you have the db2 agent db2 sub agents a buffer pool and log buffer and some other processes now work process is a application process which will take the request from the application okay and it will pass it on to the db2 agent now db2 agent basically takes the request from the work process and it does all the processing okay now depending on the workload it might have to spawn some sub agents as well okay now sometimes the request can be individually uh, handled by the db2 agent and sometimes it might have to uh, spawn some parallel agents okay now the data will be stored in the ram okay so for example you have 1 gb of ram now i can allocate like 500 mb to the buffer pool so basically buffer pool is a memory area okay for faster fetching of the data okay and uh, again you have the log buffer now what is the use of a log is basically we're storing the blueprint of whatever transaction we do okay so in case of a failure or in case of any kind of data issue we can restore our data using the logs okay now log buffer and buffer pool both are memory areas and then you have process different processes here now db2 pc lnr means is a page cleaner and uh, pf pfchr means is a prefetcher now what does prefetcher do is it it uh, moves the data from the disk to buffer pool and page cleaner basically cleans up the memory okay, for example you have 500 mb and you need uh, more data to be inserted into your buffer pool right so basically if you you have to clean up the old data from the buffer pool and write it to the disk okay so that is the use of a page cleaner prefetcher is basically like a you can say it's, it's like an astrologer you know you request some data and uh, and before you uh, get you before you get the data in buffer pool basically prefetcher will try to premeditate the data and uh, you push the data from disk to buffer pool even before you uh, request for it okay so that's the use of a prefetcher now log writer means uh, basically it will fl uh, flush the data from the log buffer into the uh, disk okay the, uh, that is the log data not the actual data and log reader means uh, it will read the um, logs and put it into log buffer okay now log reader will be mostly used during the recovery processes okay for example a rollback or a restore or some kind something like that okay now imagine uh, uh, this is a work process and the application is requested a select statement here now basically this uh, particular process want to read from this sappr.users.0.2 table 
okay and it is fetching like three columns from that table depending on certain conditions okay so let us see the flow how a select statement work on a db2 environment okay now this is a work process uh, which sends the request to the db2 agent now db2 agent will look at the execution plan in the package cache okay so let me stop here now you might be thinking what is an execution plan or what is a package cache right okay, so let me go to the next slide for a second okay now execution plan works something very similar to your google map okay now just imagine here is the person now he wants to go to this particular place okay now he can take this way or he can take this way okay now similarly if i try to search this particular location in a google map now depending on certain parameters google map will give me a right path right now the inputs to the right path will be the amount of traffic on the road the distance between these uh, locations right so those are the certain kind of parameters which will give input to the google map decide which actual path i have to take okay so our execution plan works in the similar way for example i want to select particular data so the db2 engine will decide which particular access plan i have to take to get the data from the table okay so what are the inputs like for example i said for google map you need distance you you, you should know the traffic uh, traffic right so similarly for database engine the amount of data on the particular table whether the indexes are there on the table and uh, right and when the statistics were done on the table so those kind of stuffs will be passed as the input to the execution plan okay now coming back to the select statement so now this all this execution plan will be stored in a memory area called package cache okay now when your db2 uh, when the work process sends the request to db2 agent db2 agent will check at the package cache like the execution plan in the package cache if and if we see it's like a repeated query right so the execution plan will already exist on the package cache so in that case it doesn't have to create a new plan okay so it will just go through that uh, execution plan and look for the pages in the buffer pool okay now if the pages which has been requested by the work process it is not there in the buffer pool the data will be read from the storage it's called containers in db2 into the buffer pool and from buffer pool the data will be fetched to the db2 agent and from db2 agent to the work process okay so basically it's a select statement okay now if you see uh, i said uh, uh, pages will be read from the container to the buffer pools now this can be done by two processes one it can be done directly by the db2 agent okay and i told you about the pre feature right so in advance okay db2 might put this page from the your your data file or containers to the buffer pool so it can happen in two way by prefetching or by the agent directly okay so this is how a select statement works so the work process passes it to db2 agent db2 look at the db2 agent looks at the execution plan in the package check the buffer pool if the page is there or not if not push the pages from the container to the buffer pool from buffer pool to db2 agent and the work process okay so it is just a single sta select statement now what happen when we do an update okay now imagine you have you he wants to update the user want to update one particular table or one particular row okay depend, depending on a particular situation now again the work process will give the request to db2 agent db2 agent will look at the execution plan in the package if it is there it's fine if it's not there it will create the plan look for the uh, page in the buffer pool if it exist or not if it's not there then you read the pages from the buffer pool into the uh, into from the container to the buffer pool okay now the major part is updating the record okay now your page is in the buffer pool now when you give the update command on the page it 
it will be parallelly written to the log buffer and the buffer pool okay so it's very important that we should know that when you do an insert or an update on a data page or, or a page or a record it will be updated parallelly on the log buffer log buffer and the buffer pool okay then the data will be written to the disk the log a log file actually the, the, the file on the log on the disk of the log file will be written there and a notification will be sent to the work process okay so in the meantime the data is still in the buffer pool actual data is still in the buffer pool and it has not been written to the database disk right so it's still in the ram somewhere right now you might ask me like what happens for example this is a power shutdown and all this data will be lost right for example i made a transaction of 1 million and i got a confirmation that my account was credited to so and so person but as soon as your data get flushed from the pool it's gone your transaction it's, it's not in the disk so when the system comes up you might not be able to see the transaction right so here comes the concept of recovery okay now as i told you when your system shut shut and uh, like shuts down your data is still in the log files right even though it is not there in the container it's still in the uh, log files now when we bring up the database there's something called a crash recovery okay now during a crash recovery whatever data was not written to disk but it was there in the transaction log will be replayed and all the committed transactions will be written to the containers before the database is brought up okay so any committed transaction which was there in the buffer pool will be written back to the containers and then only your database will come up so it means your integrity the data integrity okay now uh, coming back to the update statement so uh, at this point we the application got the return confirmation that your particular records were updated and this page which was updated in the buffer pool will be written to the container by the page cleaner okay now periodically it checks the old pages and it will just uh, update and this there certain certain conditions on, on based on what the pages will be written from the buffer pool to the containers okay so this is basically how your update works right the most important thing to note here is the data the data the data page will be updated both in buffer pool and a log buffer at the same time but the confirmation is sent immediately after the page is written to the log file on the disk it doesn't wait for the data on the buffer pool to be written to the containers okay uh now uh, so basically you this is a, a standard practice um, to have your uh, log uh, disk on a separate uh, disk and your data in different disk okay and uh, my intention here was to uh, tell you what are the important files which should be there in the database installation right now if you see db2 software okay now basically the default installation will be slash opt uh, sl slash ibm slash db2 something like that now you can have your software in a different location okay so this is basically your uh, software location and uh, sql lib so if you look at my earlier video about in instance creation i spoke about the sql lib directory right so whenever you create an instance this directory will be created okay so all your instance related configuration files everything will be here on this particular folder okay now this is your installation directory this is your instance directory and this is your database directory okay now under the database directory you will have all your configuration parameter related to the database okay now this is one of the most important directories which is the active logs okay so all the blueprint of your transactions will be stored on this location so in case of recovery this transaction log files will be used to, to recover your database okay now again 
you can have your diagnostic path means um, your error logs or warning logs whatever you can say in db2 we call say uh, we, we say we call the file as db2 diag.log okay so the location of that file will be here so in case of any issue with your db2 uh, engine or anything you have to come and check the db2 diag file okay now you can update this uh, you can change the location of these files i will tell you about how we can do that all those things okay so the important files are this db2 diag.log okay so it will be stored in a default location it will come under sql lib slash db2 dump so that will be your default location if you don't specify the path okay then it will be the default will be sql lib slash db2 dump and under that you will find the diagnostic files okay and then you have your data data file systems where you can store your data indexes all the kind of th uh, stuffs okay so again so the db2 software your instance folder your database directory your transaction log directory your diagnostic path or diagnostic log files and your data okay and make sure that you do not manually delete any of the transaction logs in any case okay it might bring your database down and you might be thrown out of your form right so be very very cautious when you check this particular transaction log directory okay so today i'm going to stop here and uh, based on the feedback i get for this particular tutorial i'll move ahead with your um, we'll move ahead with the uh, other topics on this um, db2 basics thanks for watching